Screen Directors Playhouse, stars Tallulah Bankhead, Jeff Chandler, production Lifeboat, director Alfred Hitchcock. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you five nights a week by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Ladies and gentlemen, once again we are pleased to salute the Hollywood screen directors and to present for the first time on the air an hour-long radio performance of Lifeboat. May I now introduce tonight's guest director, the creator of such remarkable films as Shadow of a Doubt, Spellbound, Rebecca, and, of course, Lifeboat, Mr. Alfred Hitchcock. Thank you. But I think you should know that Lifeboat is not what we call a director's picture. There are no trick sets, no camera tricks, in fact, no tricks at all. When the director approaches such a picture, he offers up a little prayer and delivers himself wholly into the hands of his actors. Since they are very good actors, the result is just as you shall hear it now, as we present Lifeboat, starring Tallulah Bankhead in her original role of Connie, and Jeff Chandler as Kovac. July 8, 1943. I'm somewhere in the middle of the Atlantic, alone in a lifeboat. This is Constance Porter, Connie to my friends. Friends in New York, London, Paris, Rome, Berlin, Vienna, Prague, Warsaw, Chungking, and points east, north, west, and south. At the moment, I'm seated at my typewriter reporting as a syndicated foreign correspondent, the demise of the freighter, the SS Argo, torpedoed only a few moments ago by a Nazi submarine, and of which I am a late passenger. Naturally, I mean the SS Argo. Already the swirling water is filled with all sorts of debris, flotsam and jetsam, such as one would expect from this sort of predicament. And in the foreground, even in this dense fog, outlined against the murky sky, is an unforgettable panorama of a huge smokestack disappearing below the water's surface. And then it draws its last breath from its round belly, clanging shrilly, of the bells defiantly protesting a watery grave. This is war, my friends. War. Well, I'll be a son of a... How do you like this? Shut up. Can't you see I've got a run in my stocking? Come on, Lee. It's cold, darling. Where did I get my camera? What a shot. Only take a second. There, there. Now I'm at liberty to haul you in. Up you go. Oh, thanks. Oil all over you. Now it's all my clothes. I'm sorry. I couldn't find a towel in the water. Here. Yeah, you got a cigarette? Here you are, a light. A cigarette case and a lighter. You're introducing a new style for lifeboats, aren't you? They don't get you with all this luggage about you. If you get up, you certainly don't look like somebody who's just been shipwrecked. Man, I certainly feel like it. Look at this diamond bracelet. Class busted. Yeah. There's a run in my stockings. And one of my fingernails is broken. I've never been so buffeted about in my life. Say, I wonder what became of Joe. Joe? Who's Joe? My steward, the colored man who helped me into this boat. Uh, this is a... Number three boat. It's not in good shape. The U-boat got a shot at it. I didn't stop to examine it. Shell holes. It looked mighty good to me, hanging on the thing. Joe said it would float, and that was good enough for me. How did he ever get it launched? I don't know. I was busy taking pictures. But he did, and he got me into it and my typewriter and thing, and safely away from the undertow when the ship went down. Then there was a cry from the fog, somebody calling for help, and over he went. 
You haven't seen anything of him, have you? No, no. What part of the ship are you from, darling? Engine room. Name's Kovac. When I got topside, it was a shambles. Terrific, wasn't it? Reminded me of an air raid that once hit me in Chunking. It reminded me of a slaughterhouse I once worked in in Chicago. Those Nazi buzzards. A tin fish ain't enough. They got to shell us, too. Better look around for some of the others before the U-boat surfaces again and seizes. She won't surface. One of our shells got her. Are you sure? She was killed dead, darling. What, did you see it? I not only saw it, I photographed it. Oh. You're Constance Porter. I heard you were aboard, so you took pictures, huh? <laughs> Nothing else but... Oh, I caught some wonderful shots on deck. A little bunch of people running around on the lifeboats. They, they look kind of slow and fat and heavy with their life belts on. And oh, terribly lonesome, darling. And then a shell hit the lifeboat and they all jumped overboard. I got a beautiful shot of the freighter going down. And oh, wait till you see the one of the U-boat crew jumping overboard. And look, there's a lovely touch floating by us now. A baby bottle half full of milk. I'll get my camera. Reach over and pull it nearer so I can get a, uh, get a closer. Oh. Anything for you. Thanks, chum. A little to the left, huh? Far to the left, I say. Here goes. Why don't you break the bottle? Why didn't you wait for the baby to float by and photograph that? Well, I'll be... Oh. Now, look here. Get away. Watch out for my camera. Yeah, sure. Where are you? Oh, right here. Yeah. Purposely knocked my camera out of my hands into the water, you stupid clumsy son. Where are you? Here. Three of them. Three of them. All right, we're coming. Why did you knock that camera out of my hands? It was absolutely irreplaceable. The price is the best film I ever took in my life. And it goes to the bottom of the sea. It's better than going there yourself. I wouldn't have parted with that film for a million dollars. I'll never get another chance to get stuff All like right, that. All right, shut up. I'll throw you in that mink coat you're wearing right where you both belong. Oh, Kovac, it's good to be alive. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's a mean-looking gash in your leg, Gus. You better last Well, don't worry about me. Go help Mr. Rittenhouse or Alice. Oh, right, he's all right. And Alice, smart guy, you. Get shipwrecked with a Red Cross nurse. That's using your head. But my leg, it's, it's leaking, huh? Hey, I'm not going to be stuck with a gifty leg, am I? Oh, not enough to interfere with your jitterbug. Jive, huh? Yeah, you tell her, Kovacs. He's the champion hoofer of the Merchant Marine, Alice. Yeah, that ain't all. Tell her what I've done in Jersey City. Later. Let's go forward, Kovacs. Okay. Once it rolls, when I cut two prizes of one Now, day. you rest. I'll be right back. Well, I'll be waiting. Oh, that's, that's a pretty right guy. Any other man will be crying mad with pain. Kovacs, there's no sulfonilamide in the kit. His wound's full of dirt and oil. Well, what are we going to do? Only God knows. I tell you, Connie, I thought everybody was killed. I never expected to see you alive. <laughs> I'm practically immortal, darling. I've got nine lives, and I've only used up three or four. Well, I thought I was done for. We were playing poker in the saloon. Miss Porter, you're the only person aboard with a blanket. I'd like it to cover, Gus. Take it. Don't ask. Look, chum, I'll do my own charity work if and when I want to. And right Here's now... Here's the blanket, Alice. Thanks. Well, share and share alike, I always say. That's right. Young man, who are you? Engine crew oil. Her name's Kovac. Rittenhouse is my name. Yeah, I'm glad to... Rittenhouse. That's right. C.J. Rittenhouse, the richest man in America. So I have been led to believe. Ritt? Yes? In the water. What's that crawling towards us? Hmm. Looks like we'll soon be having a couple more guests. And don't say there isn't room enough, Miss Porter. I didn't say that. You're besides... closest to the steering wheel. Start rowing. Well... That's a nice little Do your own rowing. Go on, row. Mr. Rittenhouse, you give me a hand. Oh, of course. Of course. A little more to the left, Miss Porter. I don't need your advice. I rowed boats before you were born. Oh, dear. What am I saying? Enough, Miss Porter. Over here, Mr. Rittenhouse. Okie dokie. Hey, it's Joe. Joe, here, grab my arm. Cooper. Yeah. Never mind me. Get a hold of Miss Higgins and... The baby. Okay. Here we go, Miss Higgins. Oh, my baby. My baby. You're all right. Come on. Up you go. Joe, it's Joe, my Stuart. Joe. Hello, Miss Porter. Hello. Won't you please take care of the baby? Miss Higgins, she kept fighting me all the time in the water. She wanted to drown the baby. Put soft with her. Baby, my baby. What are you waiting for, Miss Porter? Oh, yes, of course, Miss Higgins. If you no, 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 no. My dear, really, it's quite all right. My, my hands are clean. No, no. No, darling, I assure you, I'm perfectly capable of handling a child. Although I admit I haven't had too much experience. You see, I never could spare the time. But don't let that worry you. There, you see? You see, it isn't even frightened of me. Not even a peep out of the deal. No, no, give it back to me. Oh, Mrs. Please. Higgins, it's all right. Now you just lie down here. We'll take care of you and your baby. Who are you? My name's Alice, and I'm a nurse. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, For heaven's sake, she's faint. I'll take care of her. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Rather depressing, is Here, nurse. Better cover her with my coat. That's very generous of you. Forget it. What are you staring at, Kovac? You. 
Aren't you going to be lonesome without the mink? Don't worry. There's plenty more where this one came from. I have four more just like it at home. If you ever get home. Of course I will. Now disappear, huh? You're waking the baby. Better give it to me. Why? The child is very comfortable right where she is. Miss Porter, let me have the baby. I should say not. Miss Porter, the baby's dead. Oh, dear God. ends the first act of our Screen Director's Playhouse production of Life Folk, starring Tallulah Bankhead and Jeff Chandler. Everywhere today, people who for years have sought a fast-acting way to relieve the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia are turning to Anison. And it's interesting to know that these remarkable tablets work with incredible speed to relieve the pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. In fact, thousands of people have been handed envelopes containing anison tablets by their own physicians or dentists. If you have not already been introduced to anison in this way, why not try anison next time you suffer headache, neuritis, or neuralgia pains? On this generous basis, if the first few tablets do not bring all the relief you want as fast as you want it, return the unused portion and your money will be refunded in full. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Easy to take Anison tablets come in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. Now back to the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Lifeboat. Starring Tallulah Bankhead and Jeff Chandler. Back in my typewriter, I've begun a log of our adventure aboard this shabby and overcrowded lifeboat. This is our second day at sea. This morning we awakened and we discovered that Mrs. Higgins was no longer a member of our party. During the night she slipped overboard and joined her child. Another tragedy of this unholy war. But we gained another passenger shortly thereafter. Ironically, a Nazi seaman from the U-boat which sank our freighter. From the moment of his arrival, it has become my privilege, (laughs) did I say privilege, to serve as his interpreter, since I'm the only one who speaks German. As the men rig the makeshift sails, it is apparent that thunder in the form of friend Kovac is about to burst. I am very thankful. They have my life saved. It took me a light that we your ship to sink. Yeah, what's he whining about? He merely is saying that he's very grateful to us for saving his life and regrets very much the U-boat was compelled to sink our ship. Ask him why they shelled our lifeboats. Madam, she is here of, uh, of Rettens Water. The failed is Captain those are his captain's orders. Ask him if he's a captain. Then he's the captain, this U-boat. No, I'm not a man who is a captain. No officer. He denies he's a captain or officer, just a crew member. A crew member of skipper, he's German. That's what I can't stomach. Well, a guy can't help being a German if he's born a German, can he? Neither can a rattlesnake help being a rattlesnake if he's born a rattlesnake. That don't make him a nightingale. Oh, Gus, isn't that a pair of new nylons on your hand? Oh, it's a fine time to discuss nylons. Please, Gus, who are they for? Well, they're a present for my girl, Rosie, in New York. Oh? Oh, you know, I've gone through earthquakes, pestilence, war and shipwreck with my head bloody and unbowed. But there's one thing I know I can't survive. But this one in my stocking. Oh, no. Darling, it does things for my morale. Throw the Nazi buzzard overboard. Don't be silly, darling. He can't very well get off in the middle of the ocean, can he? Throw him off. It's out of the question. It's against the law. Whose law, Mr. Rittenhouse? We're on our own here. We make our own laws. Now, wait. This man was acting under orders. Our freighter was an enemy ship. After all, we're at war. Was Mrs. Higgins at war? Was her baby at war? She speaks very good Deutsch. Uh, haven't she been seeing in Deutschland? Nicht das ich weiß. What did he say? He says I speak his language well. <laughs> he asked whether I had any German connections. Have you? Certainly not. How come you know the lingo so well? 
And how come when I climbed into this lifeboat that you were the only one in it, all dressed up like you knew you were going someplace? Because I was going someplace. I was going into a lifeboat. And you certainly didn't forget to bring plenty of luggage along. Luggage? You silly, ridiculous ass. I... What is this? Are you insinuating? You seem to be pretty anxious to stand up for your friend here. What do you mean, my friend? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's keep our shirts on. I haven't got a shirt, Mr. Rittenhouse, or a mink coat either. Oh, I get it. A fellow traveler. I thought the common turn was dissolved. Now, children. Throw him overboard and then stick around and watch him drown. And when he goes down, I'll dance a jig like Hitler did when France went down. You're not alone here, Kovac. Let's leave the decision to the majority. That's the American way. Gus? Well... For the record, I'm an American, see, but I'm in kind of a spot because my name is Gus Schmidt, see, and I changed it to Smith. And that's what I got against these guys more than anything else because they made me ashamed of the name I was born with. And I say, chuck them to the sharks. Alice? I don't understand people hurting each other or killing each other. It seems to me he should be turned over to the proper authorities. So do I. I'll talk to the man. Perhaps I can get some information from him. Material for your book? Incidentally. What about you, Joe? Do I get to vote, too? Why, yes, certainly. Eh, I guess I'd rather stay out of this. That makes it three to two, the German states. Well, let's get down to business. Let's begin by unfurling the sail. Joe, you take that detail. Yes, sir. Kovac? One moment, Kovac. You know something about machinery, don't you? A little. Well, see if you can fix this class by my bracelet. Okay, give me a hand. Gently. Very gently. I don't even mind if I don't touch it. Miss Porter, I've read a lot of your stuff. Darling, how utterly charming. You want to know what's the matter with it? No, do tell me. You've been all over the world. You've met all kinds of people, but you never write about them. You only write about yourself. You think the whole war's a show put on for you to cover as a correspondent like a Broadway play. If enough people die before the last act, maybe you might give it four stars. All right, Tavares. Now you listen to me. Gangway, here comes the sail. Heads down or heads up. Uh, folks, we're underway. Well, where to? Where are we going? Bermuda. What about the course? Well, uh, anybody here know the course to Bermuda? Well, I was at the wheel when we got punctured, and the course was 315 east-southeast. Take the tiller, Kovac. East, southeast it is. Which way is east, southeast? Without a compass? Uh, what about the sun? With the sun this high, it's pretty hard to tell the points of a compass. I think it's out that way. You think? I'll tell you the direction in one moment. I'll ask the German. Können Sie an die Richtung? Oh, shoot us. Angeben? Den wie ich bitte sehr. He says east, southeast is in that direction. How does he know? He ought to know. I was under the impression his sub was operating around here, wasn't it? You suppose he'd lead us to Bermuda, British territory? Don't you suppose he'd rather be a prisoner of war in Bermuda than here? I don't trust him. Kovac, you're prejudiced and you can't think straight. If anybody's in a position to know where we are and where Bermuda is, he's the one. Who says so? We'll follow the Germans' course. Oh, like a juice skipper. Well, is there anybody else you'd rather have? What do you know about a ship? Well, among other things, he just happens to own a shipyard, that's all. Has he ever been in it? He has thousands of employees. He knows how to handle men. Not in a lifeboat. But we need an able seaman. How about you, Gus? Well, me, well... <laughs> nah, nah, right now I'm kind of a disabled seaman with this leg... How about yourself, Kovacs? That clunk run this boat with what? An oil can? If you're talking about a skipper, we've got the skipper right on this boat, the German. But he wasn't the captain. <laughs> wasn't he? Herr Captain. Yeah? There you are, ladies and gentlemen. There's your skipper. What about it? You mean you want to turn the boat over to the man who sunk our freighter and shelled our lifeboats? I mean, I want you to turn over the boat to the man obviously best qualified to run it. You're crazy. Well, why shouldn't he take charge, Kovac? Because I'm taking charge. Since when? As of now, I'm skipper. Anybody don't like it can get out and swim to Bermuda. What about that? I'll buy it. Suits me. Me too, Kovac. The good old American way, Mr. Rittenhouse. That typewriter went with me everywhere. Paris, Berlin, Rome, Berlin. Now, Connie, quit grousing. You've been saying the same thing over and over for three days now. Why shouldn't I grouse? Little by little, I'm being stripped of all my earthly possessions. First, my camera. Well, I don't mind the loss of the camera so much, but the film in it. I get ill when I think of it. Then my blanket goes. Then my fur coat. Mrs. Higgins could have had at least been considerate enough to return it to me before she jumped overboard. Say, Kovac, where did you get that memo pad in your hand? 
I borrowed it from you to make a deck of cards. You mean to say that you opened my bag? It was open. How about a little poker? Okie dokie. Hey, Did you win, Miss Porter? With the deck you made, darling? Jack's hopeless. That'll do for a starter. Dollar limit? Okie dokie. Got the deal. Your deal. Now, wait, I'll take off my jacket. Mm-hmm. No shirt underneath, Rick. Look at all that pretty tattooing. What are those letters on your diaphragm, Kovac? Love letters. Ah, so you believe in advertising. I open it. I never could fathom this quaint business of making a billboard out of one's torso. And stay. Three cards. I must say, however, that you've shown commendable delicacy just tattooing the initial and not printing the names, addresses, and telephone numbers. Let's see now, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five. Remind me to show you the rest of them sometime. Kovac. Yes, Alice? I just removed the bandages from Gus's wound. Better come on over to his corner with me. Yeah, sure. I'll have a look, too. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Looks like a leg of lamb, don't it? Uh, Fräulein Porter. Jawohl. Das Bein muss amputiert werden. What do you say, Miss Porter? Amputiert? Yeah? Jawohl, unverzeihlich. Die Operation muss sofort gemacht werden, oder der Mann wird sterben. What's the Nazi saying? Gus, I'm... I'm afraid your leg. Gangrene? Jawohl, gangrene. Gus, I mean, Alice, the leg will have to be amputated once. Oh, Oh, no, no, I, I've never even seen an amputation. Unter den gegebenen Umständen halten Sie es vielleicht für unangemessen, meine Dienste in Anspruch zu nehmen. Aber ich bin schon vom Beruf und habe viele Amputationen durchgeführt. He says he knows he's an enemy and technically our prisoner, so perhaps we won't care to trust him with the operation, but he's willing to do it. He was a surgeon in civilian life. He's done many operations. Yeah, if he did, they were probably illegal. No dice. I don't want no operation. Darling, no. you want to live, don't you? Not with one leg. Oh, don't be a sap, Gus. You don't understand. Sure I do, I... Rosie. What's Rosie got to do with it? Everything. If, if, if I lose my leg, I... I lose Rosie. If she was the right kind of woman, no, it would... Kovac, you take that back. Darling, don't pay any attention to that human 24 sheet. You listen to me. I may not know Rosie, but I know women. Some of my best friends are women. And one of them is that kind of a... What kind of a... A free soul. Yeah, that's Rosie. An independent spirit who lives her own life. Yeah, that's Rosie all over. With a heart that embraces all humanity. Her motto is to give. Yeah, Rosie, give anybody the shine off her back. She's got a heart that's as big as her head. And you want to break it. Who, oh, me? I'd well, rather die than trust her. Well, who says I don't trust her? It's Al Margolian I don't trust. He knew Rosie before I did, and she swore to me that there was nothing between them, and maybe there wasn't. But this Rosie, she's human, just like anybody else. It ain't like we was married or we had a home and all. And I, maybe we should have got hitched before I left on our last cruise, and I guess I should have took care of that insurance because Rosie kept asking me about it. Well, you see, the kid's always thinking of me. Well, that's why you've got to think of her. Back home, waiting for you, putting on a brave front, dancing, smiling, and apparently having a good time. But all the while, her heart's aching, torn with loneliness and uncertainty, not knowing whether you're dead or alive. And then at last, to find out that you risked your life, perhaps died, just because you had no faith in her. Oh, God, would you be? Yeah, poor kid, she'd be brokenhearted when she... Well, what are you all waiting for? Let's go. the German perform the amputation without instruments. There's no anesthetic. Easy, Alice. Kovacs alone in his knife. So the anesthetic, the best we had to offer was my flask of brandy. It'll help kill the pain. Oh, yummy boy. Do I feel pretty good here, Kovac. Yeah, Gus. <laughs> what would you want to say that about, Rosie? I'm sorry, kid. Well, you take it back. Okay, okay. I take it back. How do you feel, Gus? I'll never forget you, Miss Porter. Your fine so bitte. Alice, we'll go with the doctor. Take my life if you sterilize the, the instrument. Yes. Hi, nurse. Hi, girl. Well, anyway, it's an experience. Sure, sure. Hey, Kovac, when Rosie and I get hitched, I want you to be my best man. Glad to. Yeah, you're pal. You're the best pal I have in the world. All right, come on. Have a, have a drink on me. Yeah, sure. Sure. <sighs> 
Guess I ought to have my head examined. I, I didn't have to go to sea. I could have got a job in a defense plant making good jacks. Or I could have joined the army, even the navy. And instead of that, I had to stay in that stinking old rust belt. I don't know such story, Stan. We want somebody at the tiller. Take her, Mr. Rittenhouse. Mm, Okie dokie. Hey, Miss Porter. Call me Connie. Hi, babe. Hi, t- Kiss a kiss. Huh? Huh. What are we waiting for, pal? Mm. <laughs> Here's to you, Connie. Last drop in the bottle. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Hey, Joe, what'd you stop playing for? Give us a little music. Yeah. Okay, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Slick the music. Yeah, come on. Boogie it up. Let's have a jam session. Yes, sir. Well, I'm caught up. Yeah, Kuss auf die Wärme. Das Boot muss so ruhig gehalten werden wie möglich. Go back. You want the boat held steady as possible. Head her into the sea, Mr. Rittenhouse. Ready here, Doctor? Yeah, well. Well, sons, is there anyone here who knows how to pray? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. third act of the screen director's playhouse presentation of Life Folk continues in just a minute. But now, here's a word from RCA Victor. How do you like your dramas? Comic, tragic, mysteries, romantic, old or new? It doesn't matter. You get them all on television today. How do you like your opera? Grand, comic, soap, or horse? Oh, it doesn't matter. You get them all on television today. Yes, from ball games to ballroom dancing, from stamp clubs to nightclubs, the whole world of entertainment will be yours to watch once you buy the television set you're longing for. If you're a typical American, you'll want that set to be an RCA Victor. Already, more than a million American families have bought RCA Victor television. It's literally million proof, proven in over a million homes. The 18 beautiful new RCA Victor million proof models leave you with no excuse to wait. Embark immediately on the television way of life, the RCA Victor way. Don't you be left stranded on the shore. See your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse. One of five great radio shows that are brought to you five nights a week by the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison, Colinos, Bicidol, and other fine drug products, and RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Lifeboat, starring Tallulah Bankhead and Jeff Chandler, will continue after a short pause for station identification. Stay tuned to your local station on NBC. of the screen director's production of Lifeboat, starring Tallulah Bankhead as Connie and Jeff Chandler as Kovac. (laughs) 
Another day's past. I don't like keeping a log in longhand. It's difficult enough to transcribe my typing, but my handwriting reads like some sort of you bangy mumbo jumbo. Oh, well, I can always hire code experts to decipher it for me. Here goes. An amazing transformation came over the German from the moment Kovac's knife served as a scaffold. It was the face of a surgeon, of a man who'd forgotten his Nazi oath to Hitler and remembered another unspoken oath to Hippocrates. The thing that got me was his crudeness. Spike the rotten boat and the waves that tauntingly and challengingly pounded our sides. You'd have thought he was operating in a hospital with all the necessary tools and equipment. And yet, Gus has not come to. In this stupor, he is struggling violently. There's a bitter touch of irony before my eyes. At Gus's side are two shoes. The tension aboard has not lessened. Still think we're on the right course? Let's play poker, huh? But that's important, man. Uh, Connie. Yes, Ray? Ask our German friend if he still thinks we're not on the right course. Herr Kapitän. Yeah? Glauben Sie immer noch, dass wir nicht an Rüstengagen, Kuss auf Bermuda, Rostornen? Ohne Kompass ist das wirklich schwer zu sagen. He says he can't be sure without a compass. Pretty certain a few hours ago. Well, we've probably drifted somewhat on account of the current. Oh, we've been all through that. What's the German doing in this part of the boat anyway? Why? Is he in quarantine? Tell him to get back to the bow where he belongs. I'll do nothing of the sort. There's no need for you to treat the man like a leper. He did save Gus's life, you know. As for our being on the proper course, it's imperative that we get Gus to a hospital as soon as possible. You're aware of that? I am. Then why not listen to somebody who knows? Herr Kapitän, haben wir oder haben wir nicht Kuss auf Bermuda? Bitte, gnädige Frau. Uh... Antworten Sie. Your order, nein? Nein. No. He admits we're on the wrong course. He admits? He's only saying what he said before. You know, of course, Kovac, there's a chance. He's right. That's my funeral. No, it isn't. It's Gus's funeral. Hey, wait, wait a minute. What is this? Gus. Oh, fella, how do you feel? Gus. Well, I'm in the pink. I sight of a little hangover. Right now, I give the other leg for a cigarette. Here you are, darling. And the light that goes with it. Hey, here's the doc. Hey, doc has shown. You're going to be okay, Gus. Yeah, sure, sure. Hey, Kovac, how soon will we get to Bermuda? Pretty soon. Oh, that'll be great. Gus, it. There's still a little difference of opinion about the direction we're headed. I don't trust the Nazi. There must be other submarines around. He knows where they are. Or maybe a supply ship. He knows where that is, too. On general principle, I'd copper anything he says. You agree with me, Joe? Alice? Doesn't anybody agree with me? You're the skipper, Kovac. Uh, I'm in the minority. We follow the Germans' course. Lovely night to get seasick, isn't it, Kovac? That's what you said. I don't like the wind in these waves. What can we do about it? Check with the German. He's your seeing eye dog. The man's entitled to sleep once in a while, you know. I don't even trust him when he's sleeping, Rick. Can I ask you something personal? I've been married twice. Oh, I don't care about that. You went to school, didn't you? Yes, darling. It was in kindergarten when I first fell in love. Do you know anything about astronomy? Darling, who had the time? Alice. Yes? Do you know anything about the stars? A little. I can tell you that that's Mars to the right and Venus to the left. And that's Big Dippy and Little Dippy. Gus. Gus, what direction is Venus? It's east. That's the Germans' course. We're heading to Miss Bermuda. Yeah, you're right. Now you know why I changed my name to Smith. That doesn't prove a thing. Miss Porter. Yes, Alice? Remember after the operation you looked at your wristwatch and, and told the German the time? Did he ask you the time? Of course he did. That's funny. He had a watch of his own. Yeah. And if he had a watch of his own, why did he ask for the time? Perhaps he had some sort of phobia or something. Yes, but he looked at his own watch right before that. Then he took a squint at the sun. Oh, it's very interesting. The sun plus a... Miss Porter, what time is it? Ten after seven. I think you're slow. Slow? This is a Philip Patek. I want to know what time it is by the German's watch. Frisk him for his biscuit, Joe. Aye, aye, sir. Just what is a biscuit, Kovac? A ticker, a watch. Joe used to be one of the best all-around yanks in the business. What are you doing opening that knife? I'm working myself into a mood. Here comes Joe. Got it, Kovac. All right, give it to Miss Porter. I'm not interested. Take it and check it with your time. This is ridiculous. Ridiculous, huh? What time is it on the German's watch? It... It isn't a watch. It's... 
It's a compass. Wait, Kovac. What are you going to do? What do you think we're going to do? Don't say we. You'll never get me to consent to anything like that. I'm not consulting you, Reed. I'm not consulting anybody. But, Kovac, it's murder. Please, listen to me. We can't. We must Why not, Alice? Execution isn't murder. Then let them have it, Kovac. No, why can't we tie him up? Keep a watch on him. What are you so squeamish about? We're at war, aren't we? You've been there. You've seen him killed, haven't you? In battle, yes, but not in cold blood like this. Look out! Away! We're in for it! Here comes another! Gus, give me a hand! I'm gonna lash you to the man! Look out for yourself, Cobra! Don't go for it! <laughs> uh, how'd I do, Willie? Fine, Ed. Fine. Uh, for an accompanist. Mr. Rich, you didn't make a single mistake, are you? <laughs> Rich, you're a born accompanist. We're all born accompanists. How'd I do, Willie? <laughs> Flap happy. Call back, you silly goon. What are you laughing about? Oh, that's one for the book. Our enemy, our prisoner of war. Now we're his prisoners. He's the lighter of the boat, singing German lullabies to us while he rows us to a supply ship in a concentration camp. Tell him, Willie. Tell him how funny that is. That is not funny. That is logical. During the storm, we were blowing quite a bit off of our course. Without a sail, it would take us weeks to get to Bermuda. You'll never make it. Without food and water, how long do you think you can keep on rowing like this? Long enough, Mr. Kovac, to reach my objective. How can you keep rowing, Willie, hour after hour, when the rest of us can hardly lift an oar? Oh, that's easy. It's, it's the master race, the heron folk. Don't you know they can do anything? I'm beginning to believe it. Tell me, Willie, why didn't you speak English when you first got on the boat? Oh, you see... <clears throat> I didn't know then whether I could trust you or not. Don't be so shocked, Miss Porter. Be Gates, uh, Schmidt. Schmidt is the name. All right, Mr. Smith. How do you feel today? Um, the same as yesterday and a day before and a day before. I'm tasty. Have hope. Look above you. See that cloud? It's a rain cloud. If it bursts, you drink. If it don't? I'm sorry, I cannot dictate to the heavens. Hey, I gotta have a drink. I gotta have water. No, Gus, you must not from the ocean. The salt would only make you thirstier. Well, just a little sip. You might just as well oh. sip poison. It'll kill you. Um, uh, you know something? I think I'll take Rosie to the ball game today. <laughs> Gee, Rosie, baby, you're oh, Gus, how much full of honey. That's what you are, Rosie. I'm... There's nothing we can do to help you. Come on, let's go forward. All right. Let's sit down here and try to forget it. Sure. Anything to pass the time. Hey, Red. Red, how about some poker? Leave him to his food, brother. Say, that MB tattooed on your chest. Her initials are bigger than the others. Was she the last? Or the first? What was her name? So you won't talk to me, huh? 
Where'd you get the diamond bracelet, Miss Porter? You may call me Connie. You did what during the storm, remember? You said, all right, Connie, we might as well go down together. I liked the way you said Connie. It was like a punch in the jaw. Tell me about the bracelet. That's a dead giveaway. You're wanting us to die together like that. Dying together is even more personal than living together. What'd you pay for the bracelet? Nothing. Barter? You're a low person, darling. Obviously out of the gutter. Maybe that's why I'm attracted to you. And maybe that's why you're attracted to me. All right, quit slumming. Funny part of it is, I'm from the same gutter. You kidding? Remember when you first got on the boat, you said you used to work in the packing house section of Chicago? Well, I came from there, too. Southside? Yeah. And I lived there until I got this bracelet, and it worked miracles for me. It took me from the south side to the north side. Hey, what are you doing with your lipstick? Placing my initials on your check. Well, get off and quit slumming. What about a few hands, Rick? Okie doke. Kovac, my bracelet cloth's come loose again. Fix it. What's the stakes, Rick? He likes me, but he hates the bracelet. I wouldn't take it off for anything or anybody in the world. Bless that Willie. I know where he gets the strength to roll. How many cards, Kovic? Just one. How many days since this storm, Rick? Must be five since we've eaten and had a sip of water. You ever read it, Young's Hotel in Cleveland? No, I once ate at Antoine's in New Orleans. Doesn't compare with Young's Hotel. We used to have a menu of 150 pages. Well, Connie, I'm taking two cards, Kovac. What's your bet? Twenty. I'll see you. Three nines. Straight. He never stops winning. Connie, did you ever eat at Young's Hotel? Finest seafood in the world. Rich, shut up! Oh, what's wrong? Stop jabbering about food. Isn't it enough that you lost all of us flies through your carelessness? Carelessness? Yes, stupid criminal carelessness. It wasn't me. I wasn't in charge of the food. Joe took care of that. Why, you dirty rat. You lost it in the storm, and now you're trying to give the blame on Joe. Connie, what's the matter with you? Oh, she's all right. Just a little hungry. What are you squawking about, Miss Porter? When you write your book, it'll make a swell chapter. How it feels to be starving, first person singular. Well, those are good things to write about, hunger and thirst, if you really come from the back of the yards. Hey, keep your hands in your pockets. Easy, Connie, control yourself. Out of my way. Kovac, why don't you kill Willie? Why don't you take your knife and just said you wouldn't cut his throat? I'll tell you why, you're not strong enough. He's made of iron and the rest of us are flesh and blood. Hungry flesh and blood. And <laughs> Red, how much money are you worth? Uh, Enough to buy and sell you millions of times. What about raising the ante? Anything you say. From now on, each match is $100. Anything you say. All right, deal. How many factories do you own? What business is that of yours? I was just thinking. By the time we get home, I might own one of them. I'll open for 100 Raise your hundred. See you. I'll take three. And uh, I think I'll go for one of your airplane plants. I'll have a labor management committee, and the first thing we'll do Are is... Are you to... trying to tell me how to run my factories? No, not all of them. Just the one I'm going to run. Bet a hundred. See you. Queens. I got kings. Funny the way you keep winning all the hands. <laughs> I'm a lucky guy. Just the same. I wish we had a new deck. Another stack of matches. Here. Sorry, Kovac. Want to cut in? I have no money. It's all right. You bracelet. No, thanks. How much do I owe you, Kovac? Uh, Fourteen grand. Let's raise the ante. Thousand a match. It's your funeral. Deal him. Bet three grand. I'll see you. How many cards? Two. <laughs> Someday you'll learn it don't pay to hold a kicker. If you live long enough. Here's yours. I want three. Well, I guess I'll keep the pikers out. Get five. Ah, you matched your kicker, huh? Raise your five. Now you're talking my language. I'll up your ten. I'll see your ten and raise you one. Come. 
Hovac. This is the moment I've been waiting for. I've got you over a barrel. I'm raising you all the chips you've got and all the money I owe you. Kovac, I think you've stepped out of your class this time. I'll call you, Rit. I got an ace full house. It's raining! Uh, it's uh, raining! Uh, it's I'm, raining! I'm going to get the tarpaulin. Oh, it's Here it is, Kovac. Yeah. Give us a hand, will you, Rit? Grab a corner. You too, Miss Porter. It's raining. Come on. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Rain. The rain. Stop. It stopped. Oh, no. I have four fours, Kovac. So you win. Let me see him. See him? Where are they? What are my cards? You, you threw them overboard in the excitement. I had four fours. How do I know? You ought to know. You made the cards, didn't you? And you marked them, too. They're quicker than you. I don't buy that kind of talk, Rich. Gently, boys, gently. What's this argument all about? Money? Go on, Rich. Write a check for a million. It'll cost you nothing. We are going nowhere slowly but definitely. Come on, come at the wheel when she hits you. See, Rosie, Rosie. Hey, Rosie, I want to dance. I want to dance all night. Go to sleep, Gus. Go to sleep, Gus. Sleep? What for? Everybody's sleeping. Uh, Willie ain't. He's growing. You know something? There's somebody has water on this boat. Willie. Sure, sure. Now go to sleep, yeah, Gus. Yeah, yeah. Good night, Rosie. Good night. Willie. Willie's got water. I saw him drinking water. Willie's got water. I saw him drinking. He... Hey, Willie, I'm coming over for a drink. Go back to sleep. You've been holding out on us. Shh. You must wake up the others. They're tired. Yeah, I feel fine. Except my right foot's asleep. I can hardly feel it. It's... <laughs> Tell me, Willie, should... Should I ought to write to Rosie first and tell her about it? But, or, or should I wait until I see her? Wait till you see her? Well, give me a lift up and so I can sit near you. There's something I gotta tell you. Of course. Yeah, give me your hand. I'll never forget what she done for me, Willie. This. Anything I can ever do for you, just speak up. There is. You can remember your name is Schmidt. You like that better than Smith? Much better. Better hurry, Gus. Rosie's waiting. Yeah, but hey, the water you was drinking. Uh, Rosie's waiting for you. Well, why didn't you share that with the rest of us? Gus, shh, don't wake them up. Yeah. Okay, Willie. Why... Why don't you go off to Roseland? There. Don't you see the lights? Where? Hey, why are you pushing me over, boy? Hey! Help, Willie. You mustn't wake the others. But I can't swoop. Do, do, Help, call back. Do, do. Willie, what's going on? Where's Gus? Schmidt went over the side, Colbeck. I didn't dream it. He was calling my name. Yes. I can't imagine how painful it was to me all night long to watch him. Turning about... Suffering and nothing I could do for him. Well, why didn't you stop Rowan? Why didn't you help him? I had no right to stop him, even if I wanted to. A poor cripple, dying of hunger and thirst. What good would life be to a man like that? Gus was trying to tell me something about water before. He was in agony from thirst. I wanted to cry, but the tears wouldn't come. Yes, how could they? If I remember rightly, tears are water with a trace of sodium chloride. Isn't that so, Willie? Yeah. And the chemical composition of sweat is water with a trace of something or other. 
Why are you sweating, Willie? Why? Because he's got some water and I'm going to get it. Quite so, my friends. Here, this. The flask and the brandy. Give it to me. No, you can't take it from me. Get that. Oh, you are going to cool back. Now there's no water. Why did you get that water, Willie? I took the precaution of filling the flask from the water breaker before the storm. And I had food tablets and energy pills, too, from the U-boat. You should be grateful I had the foresight to think of such things. To survive, one must have a plan. You're right, Willie. One must have a plan. Uh, there's nothing to worry about. Soon we'll reach the supply ship, and then we'll have food and water. Get him, Kovac. You no good Nazi president. Throw him over. Kill him, kill him. Uh, Cut him with your knife, Kovac. Slash him piece by piece. Get him that overboard to be shot. Not yet, Kovac. That's something I'm going to do. Give me room. Let me get to him. Look, Willie, look. God is you. Remember the leg you cut off? Drop him, Kovac. Drop him. <laughs> Go and accept this, Willie. He's got his shoe to hold you at the bottom of the sea. <laughs> My dying day. I'll never understand Willie and what he did. What do you do with people like that? Maybe somebody ought to try to row. Where to? What for? When we killed the German, we killed our motor. No, sir, mister. We still got a motor. Who, Joe? God. Nah. We're through. That's what I think. But I'm not afraid. Hold on, everybody. So we're all going to fold up and die just because the Ezard Superman is gone. My only regret, Connie, is that in the end, I joined a mob. Baloney, Rick. We weren't a mob when we killed him. We were a mob when we sat around kowtowing to him, obeying him, practically hiling him, because he was kind enough and strong enough to take us to a concentration camp. Rittenhouse. C.J. Rittenhouse, self-made man. Made of what? As long as you're sitting there thinking of your last will and testament, I'll write your epitaph for you. Rit, Rit, the man who quit. And that goes for you too, Narcissus. There's room on your chest for another letter. Q for quitter. And you, Joe. It's all right for you to look up and trust in somebody. But how about giving him a hand? What's the matter with us? We not only let the Nazi do our rowing for us, but our thinking. Ye gods and little fishes. Fishes. Ye gods. We haven't got energy pills, but the sea's full of them. Millions of fish swimming around. Why don't we catch some? We tried to. We have no bait. Sure we have. My diamond bracelet. Bait by Cartier. Are you kidding? I'm kidding. My foot, Kovac. I'm starving. Well, what are you standing around for? Where's the fish line? Here. Bait your line, chum. All right. yes. Not only food, but oil. We can squeeze the fish for oil. It's better than water. I can recommend the bait. I should know. I bit on it myself. I've never eaten raw fish before. Uh, better not count our chickens before they're hatched. What do you mean, chickens? Uh, line's baited. Uh, All right. Over the side she goes. I'll be the fisherman. Wow! Show me the poor fish that won't bite on that bracelet. Now, everyone be quiet. Let me concentrate. What's the matter, Kovac? Are you afraid the big fish will hear us? It wouldn't have been a bad idea to have used you for bait. You'd have scared the fish right out of the water. Is that so? Quiet, quiet. I got a bite. Yes, there's a pull on the line. It's a big fish. Kovac, look. A ship. There's a ship. Don't let go of that line. Don't let go. Gangway. Kovac, you let go of the line. My bracelet. My bracelet's going to the bottom of the sea. Why are you? <laughs> she's heading right in our direction. She's only a few minutes away. It's a supply ship, all right. Yeah, yeah she's flying the good old Nazi double cross. Willie's got the last word at that. Yeah, they're lowering a boat. Well, some of my best friends are in concentration camps. You suppose the ship will have any coffee? Real coffee? All right, the second group. What did he say, Connie? He said, yes, they got coffee and Venus schnitzel and pig's knuckles and sauerkraut. Hey, hey well, what's going on? The supply ship's signaling to that boat. They're turning around. Why? Maybe they forgot the cream for the coffee. They're not going to pick us up. What's that? They've got to pick us up. They can't leave us here like this. Why, it's a violation of international law. What are you going to do, Kovac? So. <laughs> Giving it to them. Give it to them, Navy. Oh. Give it to them, darling. Right. Give it to them. Here we go again. The supply ship's trying to make a run for it. Oh. Yes, and they're headed right for us. What are we going to do? Row, sister, row. Come on, out of my way. Come on. Out. Just step on my foot. Big feet, darling. Yes, darling, the 
better to kick your whip. Say, hey, how long will it take my battleship to get to us? About, about 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Good heavens, my hair, my nails. Oh, I must have a fright. Oh, oh thanks the Lord, I still have some oh. powder and a little lipstick left. Are you kidding? Of course not. One of my best friends is in the Navy. Hey, you're really something. Don't forget, Kovac, you owe me a diamond bracelet. Yes, ma'am. And a typewriter. Sure. And a camera. You bet. And Kovac, now, behind you. What? What's behind me? A visitor clinging to the side of the boat. What are you waiting for? Help him. Okay, chum, here's a hand. Holy cow, a Nazi. Don't go in back. Oh, no, this is the last straw. You already forgot about Willie. Thank you, Shane. Dr. Shane. That's exactly how it began before. I'm not... Kovac, Kovac, this is different to that wounded. Throw him back, Kovac. But he's utterly helpless, only a baby. All right, don't look now, but the baby has a revolver in his hand. It's aimed right at your heart. You see, you can't treat them like human beings. You've got to exterminate them or else. Dr. Kung! Get him, Kovac. Get him! Takes care of the Heil boy's gun. That Achtung business sure worked. Psychology, darling. It always works. Achtung in German means attention. A German is a robot who always heeds a superior's command. All right, get up to your feet, you dirty little... Don't go back. We'll turn him over to the Navy. Sit down, sailor. Werden Sie mich nicht umbringen? What's he bleating about? He's asking, aren't you going to kill me? Poor devil. Aren't you going to kill me? What are you going to do with people like this? What are you Yes. I don't know. I was thinking of Mrs. Higgins and her baby and Gus. Maybe they could answer that. Yes, maybe they could. And so ends our screen director's playhouse presentation of Lifeboat with splendid performances by Tallulah Bankhead and Jeff Chandler. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse is proud to present one of Hollywood's most delightful couples as we recreate another favorite motion picture. Our story is The Heartwarming Mrs. Mike, directed by Louis King. And in the starring roles, you'll hear Dick Powell and June Allison. For exciting screen entertainment, see Daryl F. Zanuck's All About Eve, starring Betty Davis and Ann Baxter. It's another hit from 20th Century Fox. Listen every Sunday to your local NBC station for Tallulah Bankhead as mistress of ceremonies of the big show. Jeff Chandler can now be seen in the Porter, the Universal International Picture co-starring Marta Torres. Included in tonight's cast are Wilms Herbert, Ann Diamond, Henry Rowland, Barbara Eiler, Sheldon Leonard, and Roy Glenn. Lifeboat from an original screen story by John Steinbeck was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. The Screen Director's Playhouse is produced under the supervision of Howard Wiley and is directed by Bill Carr. This is James Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next Thursday night when we present Screen Director's Playhouse, stars June Allison, Dick Powell, production Mrs. Mike, director Louis King. <laughs> Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's five show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy Tavern, the Friday night feature of the five-show festival. Duffy's Tavern is open for business tomorrow night on NBC.